How you doing, everybody? Today we're going to look at the first half of the Barbenheimer phenomenon, Barbie. This was directed by Greta Gerwig and stars Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, and the voice of Helen Mirren. The movie begins in the matriarchal utopia of Barbie Land, which is populated by multiple Barbies and Kens. And Alan. Just one Alan. Robbie plays stereotypical Barbie, and yes, that is actually what they call her. And one day, she starts to have these very strange thoughts of death and sadness, which is a sharp contrast to the world of Barbie Land, where every day is a party. And very, very pink. After getting some advice from Weird Barbie, played by Kate McKinnon, she and her Ken, played by Gosling, go on a journey to the real world. And she comes to the shocking realization that the influence she thought Barbie had on the real world may have been exaggerated. This movie, of course, was not without controversy. The incels are big mad about this thing because, well, a woman is a central character, that's really enough. And there was that thing about the map that I'm not going to get into here because it's just too stupid and I don't have enough aspirin to cure that headache. You can Google it on your own if you're interested. But anyway, those people can all go touch grass and we can talk about the movie like mature people. I don't think I have ever seen so much pink, both on screen and in the audience. A lot of people wearing pink, male and female. And I would not have expected a movie about Barbie, of all things, to go this deep into existentialism let alone do so in a pretty clever way. They took a cheap plastic doll and made it into an examination of what it means to be human, and a woman in particular. I saw one reviewer compare Barbie and Ken leaving Barbie Land for the real world to Adam and Eve leaving the Garden of Eden, and I think that's a very accurate comparison. They are leaving this utopia and their innocence behind and getting a very shocking taste of reality. Prior to leaving Barbie Land, all of the Barbies think they've been a huge inspiration to little girls everywhere and they've changed the world forever and destroyed the patriarchy. But stereotypical Barbie soon realizes not everyone feels the same way about her, even the little girls for whom she was supposed to be a role model. And as she looks around, she realizes, oh shit, men run the world. And Ken looks around and realizes, oh shit, men run the world. Very funny watching their different reactions to the same situation. Also found it interesting that the Barbies and Kens, and Alan, appear to have free will, at least at first. But at the same time, they all have these very strictly defined roles, and apparently they also have real-world toy counterparts that children are actually playing with, and they can sense when they're being played with and yet they can travel into the real world and apparently coexist with their doll forms. It's best not to think about it too much. But they appear to exist at the whim of the children that are playing with them and also the creators at Mattel. So how much free will do they actually have? They also seem to be trapped in a very different decade. Those rollerblades and that leotard, oh, good God. There was a time that was considered fashionable, boys and girls. We were stupid like that. Robbie is great in this movie, which really should not come as a surprise. She's coming from a world where everybody is pretty much happy 24-7, and when she gets to the real world, she has to run through a full gamut of emotions as someone who has never really experienced them before. It's almost like she's a child stuck in a grown woman's body, and she nails it. Michael Sarah stars as Alan, who is supposed to be Ken's best friend, or at least that's the idea. In practice, he's just kind of there. He is very good at being pathetic. And I mean that as a compliment. Kate McKinnon was pretty much the perfect choice to play Weird Barbie. She was hilarious. Really liked Helen Mirren as the narrator. I mean, Helen Mirren makes everything better. That's just a fact. And I won't spoil it, but there is a point where she has a fourth wall-breaking line that just floored everyone in the theater. And Ryan Gosling as Ken pretty much stole the show. At first, he is the ultimate himbo, just so naive and so funny. And then, after experiencing the patriarchy in the real world, he tries to bring that into Barbie land and becomes the ultimate douchebag. And everything he does in this movie is hilarious. And I love how when he takes over the Barbie house, he renames it the Mojo Dojo Casa House, which is like three different words for house. I don't know how they came up with that, but that's hysterical. The only real criticism I have, and I can't believe I'm the one saying this, but the feminist message maybe could have used a bit more work. It seems to be stuck in Feminism 101, and it's not like there aren't important lessons to learn there, but there's not a lot of nuance. And I was a bit disappointed by that because the existentialist stuff was actually very clever, and the potential was there, it just felt a bit wasted. 
But overall, very good movie. It was clever, it was hilarious, and I enjoyed it. It's definitely worth seeing, and because I know some of you are going to ask, I am putting Barbie over Oppenheimer. And that's all I have to say about Barbie. Till next time, take care.